How exactly do I meditate and how can you easily repeat it? The first key thing with me in meditation is the deep, full breath. All of the techniques I read about in Thich Nhat Hanh's book begin with taking control of the breath. Because the breath is here right now. The breath is real. And when you breathe in and get a good dose of oxygen, your whole body feels good and benefits from that. It's something that you don't need any time to do. You can simply do it right this moment. And it's something you are doing already anyway. When you take control of the breath, you center yourself in the here and now, which is the place you want to be. And when you take a breath, you find you open up a certain space in the mind of silence. So taking a breath is the first place to exert control over the mind and over the body to show that you, the witness, you, the person, the being, the divine soul, watching and living a human existence right now, Taking control of the breath shows that you have the true power over this body, not any line of thinking, not even anything the body's doing. That you can choose to have this body breathe whenever you want to and whenever you feel like it. And you can choose to have the mind be silent whenever you feel like it. And so that is where the meditation begins. So I often at least take one deep breath nearly every few minutes throughout the day. I find whenever anything stressful, whenever anything I don't like comes up, my first reaction in taking a deep breath always makes it better. It instantly opens up a little bit of space. And so I know I'm losing space when I feel pain. And so my next step when I feel pain is to take a deep breath. So that's how all of these meditations begin with taking a deep breath. So a deep breath in through the nose, out into the navel. That's a deep breath. Now out through the nose. The navel collapses again. One deep breath. Now many of the meditations that Thich Nhat Hanh explains start off with 10 of those in a row. And I'm not going to do each 10 right here because you have plenty of time to do that on your own and I'll get straight into the line of thinking with these and I've already taken several deep breaths with you. I do the 10 deep breaths anytime I want a more focused meditation. Often this happens when I'm in bed at night because the mind likes to get spinning at night and so the 10 deep breaths in a row really get that silence rolling, that space, and it's usually a lot easier to fall asleep. I guess this is kind of what people mean when they say counting sheep. <laughs> so 10 deep breaths. I figure if I'm a little stressed out, there's no reason I can't take 10 deep breaths and focus on it. One, I'm breathing in. I'm grateful for this breath. I'm breathing out. I'm grateful for this breath. And you can use things like that, anything you want to say, breathing in or breathing out, as a meditation. And so those are easy, simple meditations to do. And those are ones I do whenever I just have a minute and I need some real quick space and I have a little bit of pain and I want to open up some space. Now, what I'm going to share with you now are some of the more deeper thought intentionally focused mind patterns I've done that have been incredibly effective in opening up great space as a habit in my life. So when you're in the habit of having no space in your life, some of these meditations will help you open up great space. What I will share with you are the thought patterns and some of these are what was recommended by Thich Nhat Hanh to meditate on for Buddhist monks to train themselves on. And so what these do is help break down the mind's thought pattern and the perception of this understanding of the world and to break down some of the desires in the moment pitched by the mind. 
So I'll show you, for example, I have a helpful meditation I used for lust. Lust is the wanting, the craving for some kind of sexual interaction with another human being. And lust is a very powerful desire that's programmed internally. And it may feel all-consuming. And lust is one of those things that can take away space in your life. And so this meditation helps me whenever I feel the pain of lust because lust is painful, especially as a man who's married and has a wonderful, loving wife. To have lust is painful. And so whenever I have lust, this meditation helps me. And it's called the something like this that Thich Nhat Hanh put it. It's something about the revulsion of the body. And all you do is simply think about what the body contains. The same way you might look at the nutrition facts on food. You think what the body contains. And so you can see how this is good for lust when you do it. And you can think about it with your own body. My body contains what? What does my body contain? It starts with a question and the taking control of your breath. What does my body contain? My body contains teeth, saliva, sweat, hair, bile, urine, feces, blood, bones, bone marrow, nails, cells, bacteria, and all kinds of other things. Hair, brain matter, etc. It goes on and on and on. So the more you think about that, and you think about that in detail, like there's urine sitting in my bladder right now. There's feces going through me right now. There's intestines squeezing food through. There's bile, there's stomach acid in my stomach right now. My heart's in the middle of my chest, pushing blood all through my body. There's red blood cells flowing through right now with oxygen. There are white blood cells looking for anything that doesn't fit in the body. There are little cancer cells sprouting up and then being devoured by the white blood cells or simply dying and not being able to continue living. There are neurons firing off in my brain. There are hairs growing everywhere. There are teeth in my head. There's a tongue in this mouth. There's bacteria in my throat there to handle processing food. There's bacteria all throughout my intestines to handle processing food because they can live there. There's nails in my fingers and toes. And so thinking about these things eliminates that fantasy of lust because lust is usually a very surface kind of ordeal. When you start thinking about any other person in terms of what their body contains, it gets to be very difficult to lust after them. And when you think about what your own body contains, you will often see whatever desire your body has in the moment fade a little bit into space. When I think about, I'm hungry, this can be useful too. Oh, okay, my stomach wants food. Well, what does my brain want? What does my heart want? Well, my heart probably doesn't want a huge binge half pizza for me to throw down along with a thousand calories of garlic sticks. That's probably not what my heart wants right now. My colon probably doesn't want to go through and process that. It's probably going to make a lot of gas and I'll have to fart. <laughs> so you can see these meditations are powerful because they break through the matrix of the normal ways of thinking. And you'll find your mind does not want to go into detail. You'll find if you're lusting after a person, you tell your mind, oh, you want them so bad? What exactly do you want about them? Do you want all of them? And then you can go into more detail. What exactly does that person contain? And very soon your mind, you keep thinking about it, your mind will resist and then it will give up. Okay, you know what? I don't want that. Another thing that works really well is the meditation on birth and death, and especially on death. And this worked really well for me. I had an awesome spiritual experience using this meditation in the shower. Thinking about death, 
because the mind likes to be afraid of death, but at the same time, it does not want to think about it. How many people have you seen something death-related come up and they shy away from it? Oh, no, I don't want to think about that. The irony is it's great to think about. It destroys all of the mind's fears. It smashes apart all of the mind's fears and projections and goals and hopes. It smashes it apart into empty space. And then that's where your genius can come out. So this one works fantastic for me and I use it often. Think about the certainty of death and picture it clearly. For me, I've selected cremation in my will, my body burning. That's not something that's theoretical or might happen. That's a certainty. Although it may not necessarily burn. It might, depending on how and where I die, it might rot out in a field somewhere. But burning is more than likely what will happen with it. So I think about my body burning because that's a certainty and it, it has no pain with it. It's not painful because the body's dead. It's simply burning up into nothing. And so this helped me have an awesome spiritual experience. And I made a video and I threw it up on YouTube right after it happened. Man, it was good. I was in the shower and my mind was complaining and whining about the usual things. And I thought, how much does this really matter? And I, something about death was bothering me and I went right into it. I am absolutely going to die. There's no question about that. Let's think about that. Someday I will be dead. I will have nothing I ever have to do again in this body for all of eternity. Nothing I've made will matter soon enough. Maybe not immediately, but everything I've made soon enough will fade also. Whether it's a family, whether it's these courses, all of that will disappear also. I will go to absolutely and completely nothing. And that's where I started this existence out too. I came in with absolutely completely nothing. And I thought about that very carefully. What would it be like? I would have nothing. Absolutely no attachments, nothing to do, no worries, no problems, no fear. Dead. And then from there, the more I focus clearly on that, I will have that outcome. In fact, dad and grandpa are already in that state. And so what happened? Initially, my mind resisted. Initially, my mind complained. No, this is horrible. Don't think about you dying. No, 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 no. We don't want to do that. We're afraid of that. And I kept thinking about it anyway. I kept thinking about it. And I kept thinking about it. This is not up for debate. It's not up for discussion. It's a fact. Complete, total death. Pure. Nothing left. Body burned and rotted and gone into nothing. That's certain. And the farther I went into that, eventually my mind surrendered. It put its hands up and said, okay, okay, that's it. I have nothing else to say. And it stopped. My mind stopped. And when my mind stopped, it kind of blew up almost. And this was in the shower. I was crying at first, sad out of self-pity. Oh, I have to die, I have to die. And man, once I pushed through that self-pity, gratitude came in just like sunlight in my heart, as if I had a whole sun in my heart just burst out of me. Gratitude that in fact I am alive right this moment. That is a fact also. And that I am not dead this moment. I am in fact completely alive in this moment. I need nothing else except to be alive in this moment. And even at some moment, I won't need that. I have a great gift of life now. I have everything I need, which is the gift of life now. I need nothing else. I don't need more money. I don't need a new house. I don't need absolutely anything else in the world. I have everything I need simply in the gift of life right now. And that's my best way of explaining it with words. 
but it was more of a rebirth almost. As if after dying, I came back into my body from a point of being dead and said, all right, let's do this again. Now we have life now. I went to a place of death as clearly as I could picture it with absolutely nothing and then came back to life. Oh, I have life now and that is wonderful. And I remember just standing in the shower looking around as if I'd never showered before. Oh, look at this water running. And again, I have to use words to describe it, but it was just wonder like running water, warm water, cold water, washcloth. Wow. I sat down. I don't know how long I was in the shower, but I was just in complete joy and happiness for the moment. And I cried tears of joy. Thank you. Thank you for this gift of life now. And so imagine that point. That point is where you can get to with meditation, a complete lack of needing anything else except the gift of life you have in this moment. That's where your inner genius comes out, right there. Your inner genius is out right there. That's what it feels like. Out in the world, happy simply to be here, looking at everything around with a sense of wonder and love and happiness. Yes, we're here. And the beautiful thing is there's no low that comes after that. If you go after that feeling with drugs, alcohol, you will get this horrible low afterwards. When you have a spiritual experience like that, there's no low afterwards. You're simply accessing what is already here. You're simply clearing away what already exists in this moment. Drugs and alcohol are a quest to do the same thing. Alcohol and drugs, at least used in excess, are a quest to do the same thing. But having that kind of spiritual experience is kind of dull. You can't quite have it quite the same on alcohol or drugs because there's a big down afterwards and you're not fully there. When you have it without any alcohol and drugs, you're fully present. You're not barely awake because you drank so much or you're, whatever drugs do to you. I haven't done a lot of those. I'm grateful. And so when you do this meditation, you can get those amazing moments of life that just show you the clarity, the miracle of life here in this moment that you don't need to go anywhere or do anything, you're already in exactly the right place and everything's fine just how it is. That from a place of birth and death to where you are now, all you have is the gift of life. And that's all you need. You don't need anything else. So thank you for sharing this with me. I'm honored that you've let me explain this to you and I'll share some opportunities you might have today to try out these meditations.